Well, hey, good evening, folks. How are you all? Lovely to see you. It's uh, amazing to see the chat. I, I, all I can see is, uh, I can see, hello from Somerset, hello from blazing, blistering hot Texas, hello from California, South Dakota, yeah. Queensland, Cambridge, Worcester, South Wales, we know where that is. <laughs> Jennifer's yeah. South Lakes, yes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, fantastic. Nice. It's lovely to see you all. Thanks for coming. So, greetings from oh, and me. And from South Africa as well. Fantastic. Yeah. yeah, hello from me too. Yes, it's nice to see you. Well, you're not, you know, virtually, you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. So, welcome yeah. to another um, watch party. Now, as you know, we've been right through Standing With Stones in, uh, in seven parts, and that seemed pretty um, popular. Um... The film we're going to watch tonight hasn't quite got the viewership of Standing With Stones, uh, but nevertheless we hope it'll bump it a little bit, because it's a little film that we're very proud of, isn't it? Mm. Uh, yes, of indeed. The it's, um, yes, it had to be made, really. And, you know, <laughs> I, I suppose it's fair to say that uh, we wouldn't have made it if I didn't live down here. But... Um, <laughs> but <laughs> But the the thing is that it's just such a good illustration of how much stuff there was everywhere, and it's yeah. just disappeared because uh, you know farmers have destroyed things or what have you. You know, down yeah. here that hasn't happened. Um, so yeah, it's amazing, really. Um, Nigel, yes, <laughs> I do have the fifty p for the meter. <laughs> <laughs> yes, for those that don't know, uh, we were doing a live on uh, Tuesday night, and uh, Rupert's uh, power went. Uh, as most of Three you, times. I can see in the chat, were, were, were actually there. Yeah. yeah. Uh, however, um, lots of familiar names uh, in the chat, obviously, and welcome to you all. Uh, um, one or two that I haven't seen before. And, of course, a big, huge uh, welcome to you if you've not joined us uh, before. Uh, I haven't worked it out. I'm Michael. He's... Rupert. I'm Rupert. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Together we yes. are the prehistory guys, and we've been doing this what for three years. When I say this, uh, you know, we've been we yeah, we've been doing the, yeah. The, oh, yeah, loads of this stuff. Yes. For, yeah. Yes. Uh, so, but um, a long time after we'd completed uh, the original Standing with Stones uh, film, we've been working together for a long time. You make it sound uh, like a you know like you're <laughs> you're weary, Rupert. Like you've reached the yeah. end of your. <laughs> I hope that isn't the case. Anyway, uh, if if you're new to us and you're joining us for the first time, um, you'll notice the friendly lot in in the chat. They are, uh, and most of those folks are um, our Patreon uh, supporters. So I hope their general friendliness and uh, chirpiness will encourage you to have a look and consider uh, joining them. Um, we've got so much, thing, so many things on the go at the moment. Uh, we put regular stuff out onto YouTube, as you know, um, and we're all, we also you know, put a lot of exclusive stuff for our, our Patreon folks as well, ad-free versions of what's on YouTube and a special new exclusive podcast that you folk on Patreon have got that nobody else is going Indeed. to Indeed. Yes, um, you'll uh, hear more about that tomorrow night, I should think. Um, but apart from that, we have recently decided to embark on at least pre-production of uh, Standing With Stones 2. It's been a long time, what, 14 years since Standing With Stones 1, and um, yeah. you folk... A lot of you folk out there have put your, um, you know, got our arms up our back until we uh, could take it no more, and we've uh, committed to make a, <laughs> another film in, in the in the coming year or so. So watch this space; it'll be a feature length yeah. as before. And uh, uh, yeah. by joining us on Patreon, you can uh, support us uh, doing that, and we'll be doing a Kickstarter campaign later on in the year. So the message is, uh, watch this space. Have I said enough? I think we'll get back to the matter in hand. When did we make this film, Rupert? Oh, I think it was it was 2019, wasn't it? 
I think that's I right. I think it was 2019 uh, that I Well, it wouldn't have been last year. The... It certainly wasn't 2018. It was definitely the summer of uh, 2019. Yeah. And as we were saying, I mean, the, the principal reason that uh, it, Dolmens of the Longer Dock got made is that Rupert happens to live down there in the, in the south of France. And uh, it, it kind of made, made sense to uh, use your proximity to them to me to come down there and we get out and about in the yeah. heat and with the cicadas and yeah. uh, and point a camera at a few megalithic uh, monuments and dolmens of the yeah. Longer Dock as uh, the result. Uh, I'll tell you a, a funny thing though, and that's that around where I live, the prehistoric sites are they're there, but they're completely untended. Uh, they are just they're hidden in woods and undergrowth and what have you. You have to drive for the best ones to visually. You have to drive at least an hour from where I am, even though just within walking distance there's loads, but they're just yeah. completely un unfilmable. Uh, <laughs> it's just funny about that, really. Mm. Um, Anything else mm. we need to say um, you know, to contextualise uh, the, the the movie before we start? I, it is only sixteen minutes long, um, but yeah, uh, we can interrupt ourselves as uh, <laughs> as much as we like, can't we? I mean, there's, you know, there's, there are points to be made. Um, yeah, yeah. But equally, I think we did pack an awful lot of information within the 16 minutes anyway, didn't yes, we? Yes, I don't think there's a lot of more archaeologically, uh, archaeologically, that's a good start, archaeological information <laughs> that we can uh, pass along um, at this time, during this... Uh, Odds and sods, maybe. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. We'll but mostly, go. Yeah. mostly it'll be um, a bit of behind-the-scenes stuff, I think, you know, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, about climbing up and down hills with uh, equipment and uh, cicadas. Yeah. All right. Um, so enjoy. I shall begin the movie now. Where we start off. I mean, we've talk. If anybody knows the area, we're we're very near Carcassonne, that fabulous uh, medieval town with, yeah. the, with with the fortifications there, which does make an appearance uh, uh, early on. Uh, mm. Any other recognisable features? Some of you. Some well, of the you, crow flies. We're only fifty miles from Spain. That Just that is goes true. Straight south, straight south to Spain. Some of you um, may recognise a particular monument that finds its way in there to sort of illustrate wh where we are. Um, I wonder if uh, yeah, shout out if you recognise places um, in in, in, <laughs> in the chat. It'd be interesting to see. All right. Uh, without further ado, do I shall begin uh, Dolmens of the Longer Dock. Megalithic sites always seem to be enigmatic, mysterious, isolated or inaccessible. Yet the reality is that they can be found almost anywhere that land hasn't been engulfed by modern towns and cities or taken over by industrial scale farming. And the reason for this is simple. Successful settlements don't move. They just get progressively bigger over time. As a general rule, if you live in a town or a city today, you're living where people first settled thousands of years ago. The traces of their lives, if they haven't been destroyed by building, 
they're still there, right beneath your feet. So to gain a clearer picture of the scale of their communities, we need to look away from our modern settlements to the lands that were rich and fertile long ago, but which failed for one reason or another, forcing their inhabitants to move away from their homes, to move to new pastures, to where land that once supported sheep and goats has now for long months of the year become so arid that it's really only suitable for the deep roots of vines. There's Carcassonne. Last tour. And one of the best places to get a sense of that scale is down here in southwestern France in the Languedoc. A region steeped again. in history with legends of Cathars, Templars and Crusading Knights, romantic chateaus and mountaintop fortresses. Custosa. That's Custosa. Yeah. The one before was Arc. Yeah. Estimates of average population density across Europe during the Neolithic period vary wildly from just a few people per square kilometre to 60 or more. And one thing we can say with absolute certainty is that there is absolutely no certainty of the true numbers of people within these social groups and settlements. Do you want to pause that there, Mike? Oh, it's all yep. Too yeah. late. Too late. Um, no, it's just that that view, it's one of the things that I like most about uh, that particular site that we're going to have a closer look at right now. Yeah. It's just that when you approach from the road, so you can pull off the road and park your car and you walk up and what you see on the top of the hill is just this tiny little dolmen. And it's only when you actually get up to it that you see what it really is. It's yeah, just yeah. The, the, one, of the, one of the best surprises in southern France. It's sunken down yeah. slightly in the, in the top of that hill, yeah. Yes. Uh, Rupert, uh, uh, Yoda, Yoda, Yoda's mom on drugs is, 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 is asked if I go there often. I presume you're talking about Carcassonne. Uh, to be honest, I avoid it like the plague, uh, having been down here for quite a long time now. Uh, and I always take friends there if they come and visit because everybody wants to go. And it's uh, always at a time of year when it's sunny. And there was one time we went a few years ago, and I'm not kidding, we thought somebody had died in the street and we were waiting for paramedics or something. It wasn't. It was just a roadblock of human bodies. And we stood waiting to walk up the main road for 45 minutes. Touristic. Nobody was moving. It was just it, people, 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 yeah. people. So, no, I don't, I don't go there. I know it well. Mm -hmm. but, um, yeah, mm. choose, choose your time wisely, I think. Uh, yeah. you know, it can yeah. be gorgeous. Don't, don't uh, even uh, think about going, to it, going in August. It's a nightmare. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, and anybody that mm. thinks that the uh, sound of the cicadas is exaggerated, um, think again. It, <laughs> they were yes. deafening. In fact, I had quite mm. a problem evening out the, the, the sound on that because each cut in that film would have been horrible if I'd have not done a wild track of cicadas. Yeah. Taken pains to do, get a second uh, soundtrack and, uh, and blend them across. Um, yeah. But uh, fortunately, uh, I had my wits about you. It's unbelievable. Yeah. And the funny thing is that the noisiest ones, the ones that really are so deafening that you can't get away from it, they're about that big. <laughs> 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 the big ones are really quite sedate in comparison. But, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, anybody recognise uh, all those places? Carcassonne, uh, probably the other castles. Um, but there's uh, there's w one monument there that some people may uh, may recognise, some not. If you're familiar with the the stuff about Ren le Chateau, that one of them, one of those uh, featured there was the Tour Magdala. Mm. Nothing more to say about that for the time being, though. Um, shall I move on? Yeah, nice on. introduction. Yes. <laughs> All right. It's that a site like this can only be created by a large community of people coming together. This is Morel da Fada, the Hill of the Fairies. Built around five and a half. I didn't hear you, Rupert. Sorry. I beg your pardon. I was just saying, we're very big in the bottom of the screen there. <laughs> oh, I can, uh, I can reduce that. Okay. 
years ago, it's the largest passage tomb in southern France, and it clearly needed a whole lot of time and effort to create. This capstone, it weighs 25 to 30 tonnes. Now the whole site is made of local sandstone. You can find it right here. But that 30 tonne capstone, that's made of limestone. And the nearest outcrop that that could have come from is three kilometres from here. Now, look, imagine how long it must have taken to fashion these beautifully shaped portal stones. That's amazing. Yeah, just may confirm, because people are amazed by the size of that uh, porthole um, there, that that is carved out of that uh, slab of stone. And furthermore, the, 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 the back in the passage, uh, similar slab stones are missing. So it's not just yes. one. Am I, am I correct in that? I'm not making that up. Absolutely so, correct. Yeah. yeah, three sections going through. Um, mm. uh, so there are two dividing walls, each of wall, each of which were cut like that. But yes, the uh, the inner set are, are, are missing. Uh, but yeah, astonishing piece of work. David Spence asks: Are the stone walls uh, between the standing stones original? Um, now, obviously, it is they're, another site that they're has reconstructed. been reconstructed. Yeah, yeah, uh, uh, but they're restored from what was there. Um, yeah. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I mean, you can see from. In fact, there's a number of sites in the region that are a lot less restored, and you, so you can see <laughs> oh, that we'll the see actual that. design yeah. is yeah. correct. Uh, the design is yeah. correct, but uh, yeah. Uh, that's right. Uh, excavation was in 1960s, wasn't it? Uh, um, again, I'm plucking that out of the uh, ether. Yes. Um, yeah. And now <laughs> I have a confession to make, folks, and that's that uh, a lot of the information comes from Bruno Marx's uh, books that he's done for a lot of uh, southern France. And uh, he's a wonderful researcher. The maps in his books are appalling, but we'll forgive him that. He's a wonderful researcher. Um, but uh, the book that relates to the particular region that we use for the film, I actually lent to somebody the other day. and So I can't just open it and say, <laughs> yeah, that's how many or what have you, because I don't remember and I don't have the book here. There you go. <laughs> so I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Yoda's mm. mum's on drugs. Uh, insofar as th nothing has been reintroduced to the site that mm. wasn't there uh, originally, uh, yes, uh, the, mm. uh, that that mm. that reconstruction is pretty safe. Yeah, yeah. So I continue. Yeah, it is. In, uh, yeah I think you should. So, uh, I mean, it'll become apparent from other sites that you'll see as we go through the film that yeah. you can see that that is a design that um, yeah, yeah. that was quite common. OK, continuing. Largest passage grave in southern France. Then we know the local populations weren't particularly small. So apart from the big flamboyant monuments of the larger settlements, surely there should be other, smaller, more familiar types of grave built within smaller social groups, like dolmens, for instance. Yes, there are. And here's the thing, there are loads of them. In fact, here in the Erol, a region smaller than the county of Devon in England, there are two stone circles, 149 menhirs, and 448 dolmens. And that's just the ones that have been found. And the reason that there are so many oh, don't is that head. all the vines are in the flat <laughs> lowlands. The craggy uplands here, or the mountainous uplands further south, are far too impractical even for vines. So the land has been left to become a sprawling scrubland of box, juniper and bramble. Dolmens like this one, the Grand Dolmen de L'Oreal, north of Ciron, are just left to crumble and decay, overlooking the sweeping panoramas chosen by the builders. Some have been dated to late Neolithic and early Bronze Age, but many remain completely unexcavated, which makes it hard to infer any deep information. Uh, I don't think Rupert bumped his head once. Um, I I, I'm the I'm the I, one. I am, a, I am a short person. I'm the one prone to bumping my head. Uh, you know, You're a taller one. person. I'm a tall, taller person, and also because I'm 
got the camera in my hand, I often find myself walking backwards. <laughs> That's true too. That's With true nobody too. Much to much my amusement. A lot of the time. <laughs> nobody to say, um, oh, watch out. Too late. <laughs> <laughs> yes. uh, my biggest danger was not actually bumping my head, but tripping over the stones, you know, because uh, they just lie there. Uh, you know the, the materials from Actually, the dominant itself. Actually, it's kind of that we've never thought of buying you a, uh, what, a rear vision, a hard hat. <laughs> Is it a hard hat or a uh, or a crash helmet? Seriously, we should. I mean, for the sake of you know traipsing it up, uh, we, we probably both should actually. <laughs> Yeah, health, I don't think I want to be presenting a documentaries with a with a hard yellow hat, hat on. on. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I will continue. Intriguingly, throughout the region are dense clusters of dolmens, hinting that perhaps these cemeteries were once far more common and widespread than we imagine. In France, these concentrations of prehistoric tombs are called necropole, necropolis, quite literally from the Greek city of the dead. Far to the east is the Necropole de Boisba, the necropolis of the Low Wood. I'd just stop that there. I, uh, I probably should have just paused the film so you can uh, you can see. But that signpost just to the left there, it said uh, Chemin des Druides, so uh, the way of the Druids. So, I, yes, it, it's interesting. <laughs> there is a, a history culture of Druidism in the south of France. I don't know. No, not at all. No, it's, exactly. It, it's uh, it is purely and simply the uh, just the, the hippie thing engulfed in. And I say that yeah, with just, all. Behind. Sorry, I'll just. <laughs> Did you... Oh, I missed it now. Oh no, there it is. It's that one. Uh, I can't do it. There we go. <laughs> Shaman de Dries. That's the yeah. one. <laughs> um, I mean, obviously, yes, there were druids, but oh, they're so much later. It's tiresome, really. When, mm, mm. Uh, yes, Yoda's mom is on drugs. They, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, I agree. Um, which is, you know, yeah, fair enough. But it's it's when people start claiming ownership of things on the basis of complete fiction that's when it gets a bit tricky for me. I um, have to say, it took us twice as long to get to this place because. Mm. Uh, Rupert, uh, being the naturalist he is, uh, spent a lot of time pointing out that there was a, a spider's web, for example, stretched across the path, which we weren't allowed to break. I would have gone, no. yeah, I wouldn't, probably wouldn't have even noticed. But, you know, and then next along the lane, oh, look, there's badger poo. Yep, that's okay. how it was, folks. Uh, these uh, These little pieces of joy punctuate my days. <laughs> I uh, won't apologise. Let us continue. <laughs> the necropolis of the low wood. Engulfed and reclaimed by nature, it can be hard to find the dolmens, but an interesting little tease here is that one of the graves contained a single amber bead, Baltic amber, possibly Scandinavian. Well, that's quite a long way from home, isn't it? Perhaps more enigmatically, another tomb a couple of miles away was also found to contain a single amber bead. Of ritual significance, maybe? But it's equally possible that they were placed in the tombs by the same individual who had a reason to send the deceased off with identical offerings. But the concentrations of these tombs raise other questions. There? It's true. Yes. Uh, because the amber bead thing is yeah. um, is actually very significant, and we were in complete ignorance um, prior to this. We hadn't really, uh, in fact, at that point, had we even met Duncan Garrow? Uh, I'm not sure that we had. I don't think so. Um, we certainly hadn't talked to him at length. Now, Duncan, uh, he's an archaeologist. Uh, he's working mostly in north of England and up in Scotland uh, a lot of the time. Uh, Duncan has done a huge amount of work on burials generally, um, Neolithic and Bronze Age burials. 
and it was talking with Duncan that he was uh, he was telling us about various burial practices that uh, they're pretty obscure because not a whole lot of stuff remains in the archaeological record and and he was talking about drawstrings on bags and shrouds and and yes. uh, so you could have a, uh, a a bag of grave goods and the bag has rotted away and the draw cord that you know that pulled the bag tight that's rotted away all you've got left is the amber bead and uh, uh, and shrouds you know you could have had a burial shroud covering a body that was also drawn at the head uh, with a uh, drawstring amber bead on the drawstring uh, so when people talk about you know beads being found you know we, we mentioned the amber ones and amber does crop up quite a lot but uh, in fact there's another burial later on in the film uh, or uh, where uh, they found gold beads now it really is quite possible if not probable that the beads were on drawstrings and mm. the bags and the drawstrings are just gone yeah yeah that's um, all i wanted to say no no it's a really really good point and important i'd forgotten about that yeah uh stone age steve yeah um it's amazing um what's available uh, as far as library music is concerned uh, these days i i mean the, there's been such an explosion of uh, people you know uh, becoming youtubers and uh, etc there's a ripe market for um for from royalty free music um uh, and uh, there are several libraries, and the the quality of the music is just astonishing. It's just you know making uh, making choices. I don't have the time to do com composition and stuff myself anymore, but uh, I'm very confident every time we make something that I can find something in the particular library that I uh, I use that's uh, that's appropriate and, and it's a wonderful thing because i like cutting to music i like working with with music you know when it, it, music i find really does inform the pace and uh, and, uh, and and cutting of of, of film so I, I really like to work so as almost as much with the music as the script ha so uh, right that's it uh let's Go there are again. small regional differences, but essentially the design to a of construction of a dolmen there. is a fairly standard affair. Upright stones supporting a capstone, all of which may or may not have been covered by an earth mound, and it's commonly accepted that they were the tombs of the ruling or elite classes. And if that really is the case, then we still have absolutely no idea how the bodies of the rest of society were treated. probably don't get an impression that's a, this is a wonderful uh, place the 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 uh, Nec necropole de la boaba uh, it's quite a walk to get through there uh, perfectly doable it's a you have to go on a bit of a hike but to emerge from those trees on the edge of that chasm is like a it's like a mini grand canyon isn't it and uh, mm. uh, and quite uh, quite unexpected i hope uh, the, the, in the region there are some yeah. absolutely splendid gorges and mm -hmm. uh, and mm -hmm. ravines and what have you and uh you know it's always good to bear in mind with places like that that the the box woods are then comparatively recent although it's a very very slow growing tree um so back then that whole necropolis going down this gentle slope and yeah. it is a gentle slope, but the whole necropolis going down to suddenly this sheer cliff face dropping down into the um, uh, the canyon, um, that that would have just been an open view from all yeah. the burials. Uh, you know, they always buried people with a cracking view. <laughs> we keep mm. coming back to that. Did you say before yeah. I started that last section again that there were a couple of comments <clears throat> that that you wanted to address I, with I did and it's um it's Belisaria said do you think there was a relationship with the prehistoric monuments and where the Knights Templar placed their castles and or original layout of churches not really um there's mm -hmm. certainly a, a relevance to um 
churches and prehistoric sites in some cases hmm. but generally speaking then no the, the the thing that you know you have to bear in mind with uh with so many of these sites is that there were loads of them loads hmm. and loads and loads and loads hmm. and loads um and this is just all that's left so um Templars tended to build their castles on uh, <laughs> uh, places with <laughs> with the most uh, advantageous views, uh, so they tend to be more peak based rather than uh, than cliff faced based. Um, but also, thousands of years after the event, you know, we are talking about a lot longer ago when uh, you know society hadn't formed to quite the same. Uh, state that we were when we were romping around different countries and killing people for the sake of it. Mm. <laughs> Dale asks, yeah. 16 minute film, how long to edit it? That's a good that's question. A really, yeah. It's, yeah, it's a really hard one to, to answer. I, I don't keep, keep a sort of time and motion machine going here while I'm editing. I don't know. I mean, mm. from beginning edit to finish edit, it was probably uh, several weeks, but I wouldn't have been at it all all that time. If it's you, it's if an you interesting said, thing, isn't it? Do that in a week, I probably could have done it. But it would have, mm. that would have been a push. Yeah, I think so. But that, that's on an yeah. edit. I mean, something yeah. that we haven't ever done is mm -hmm. calculated the hours or, you know, so as yeah. soon as we say, yeah, we're going to do that, the hours of research and uh, and discussion and writing and then location and filming and then editing, God knows what the whole thing works <laughs> out at. Yes. I mean, can bear in mind, of course, that each time, uh, well, for most of the sites in the film, we'd done a previous recce in the, in the previous couple of days. We filmed and recce'd over five. What was it? Five days, Rupert? Was I down there? Yeah. Five days. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, okay, just checking in the chat. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, okay. I'm just upsetting David again and not apologising. <laughs> <laughs> I think we had better move on, don't you, boys and girls? <laughs> right, here we go. Ooh, new place. Fantastic. This but then again, this is Lally Couvert de Saint Eugène, the passage grave of Saint Eugene. Another instance of the church stamping its brand on pagan culture. The site dates from the Chalcolithic, so that's late Neolithic, early Bronze Age, and it was full of surprises when the site was excavated nearly a century ago. It contained the remains of 300 people, along with a wealth of grave goods. And we're not used to seeing large quantities of grave goods in communal tombs. Jewellery included beads and pendants, 28 pendants, actually. There was a copper dagger, rings, a gold bead, arrow tips, a spear point, obsidian blades, an extraordinary variety of animal teeth, pottery, the list goes on. And that is intriguing because we normally see a wealth of grave goods associated with individual burials. It's obviously impossible to say without a great deal of laboratory work using modern techniques, but what are we to infer from this? that this was a far more egalitarian society, or is it that the 300 burials represent the community's elite over many generations? Couple of uh, questions there. I, I think it mm -hmm. so looks like the Millennium Falcon from above. <laughs> it does, <laughs> it does. Um, but, <laughs> um, but um, uh, but uh, Matt uh, Lazzy says, makes me think of the circular whatnot at Land's End. Yeah, absolutely. And it's, oh, a, it's yeah, a, yeah. A, a, a point that we've made before that uh, you, yes, you look at... Um, circular whatnot, you should clarify. I mean... Uh, sorry, circular we, we, whatnot. Um, yeah, uh, Ballow Wall Barrow is, will is, from is now on about the, ever be. Non-blues or the Ballow Wall Barrow at Land's End. Circular whatnot, yeah. 
And <laughs> you know, circular whatnot is the technical term. And the thing is that the Ballawall Barrow is unique in Britain as a structure. There's nothing else uh, quite like it. And yet you come down here, because uh, the thing is what we do know about the Ballawall Barrow in Cornwall is that its restoration is, let's just call it questionable. Um, and and you only need to strip it back to how it was when, when they found it, before it was restored. And I would put money that it was the same sort of structure as we're looking at uh, here. And there's yeah. lots of them down here, yeah. lots of them. Uh, and so the interesting thing about that is that clearly there has to have been some cross-cultural thing between uh, southern France and, uh, and southern Britain, mm -hmm. uh, which in itself isn't a surprise. Uh, but, um, but yes, you, you, know, you, you do see these similarities of, mm -hmm. uh, of, of structure. So. Mm -hmm. uh, Tim, uh, uh, thank you. Y yes, um, uh, comment on the, the drone work. Which uh, one do I use? Um, I have a, a Mavic, um, DJI Mavic Air. I think that's the one. Yes, it's the original one, not the Mark II or whatever. Uh, uh, yeah, fantastic little drone. Does its job exceedingly, uh, exceedingly well. Uh, and I haven't lost it yet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, <laughs> quite, nearly, but that's yeah. another story. Uh, uh, it concerns Thornborough Henge, actually, but I won't go into that now. Um, <laughs> anything else there? I can't see. Uh, Emma says, yeah. has any testing been done on the bones to date oh, them? Yes. Yeah, it's chalcolithic, uh, so yeah. early Bronze Age. Um, yeah. uh, when uh, we say chalcolithic, I mean, because uh, uh, ages vary from place to place. Have we, have we got an earlier yes. chalcolithic in France than we have, say, if we were talking about Britain? I think we it would be a few hundred years. I don't think it's. I don't think it's yeah. as much as five hundred. But I wouldn't put money on that right now. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, All right, let us uh, resume. Okay. Yes. There seems to be no rule for how many individuals can be buried within each dolmen. Oh, I meant to say Europe, there are dolmens which held the remains. The of video doesn't seem to be moving that dozen, smoothly, playing that smoothly. I, I apologise. But what then that's about. sometimes patterns do emerge. I'm a little further south here, in the Ode, and somewhere in there is the Necropole de la Clap. Now, actually, I was hoping that I'd be able to translate that for you, but I can't find any etymology whatsoever. This place is evocatively called the Necropolis of the Clap. <laughs> I've got a guidebook here, and uh, this was written 20 years ago. And <laughs> it's been clearly 20 years of growth since he wrote this. But apart from that, I don't think anybody other than this man came here in the last century. He says, come as far as the ruined Bergery. <laughs> I see no ruined burgery. <laughs> oh. Oh, well, that could be a ruined burgery. That could definitely be a ruined burgery. Blimey, that's 20 years of growth. Good grief. Well, in that case, he said that the first tomb is 50 metres to the north of the ruined burgery. And north is great, north is up. <laughs> I'm just going to pause it there. Ruined burgery, ruined shepherd's hut, correct? Yes.
yes. Uh, just in case uh, anybody needed clarification on that. And the little sequence uh, coming up, I just noticed, Rupert, I'd, come, I'd forgotten how windy it was that day. A few days before, we'd been yeah. there to do the recce, and there'd been no wind at all. I, <laughs> and we nearly died in the heat. What was it, 40 degrees or something? I don't know. It was over 40 degrees. It, it was, was unbelievable. 40. And the, the crazy thing is that we had... Um, We'd looked at how far it was. <laughs> this is so stupid. Honestly, you wouldn't believe. I I, I have qualifications for a, a, a for trek leader and all that kind of stuff. So I did all the things that you do not do. We looked at the map and decided that was only going to be well, a couple of hours max would be all right. And so we went out and obviously couldn't find what we were looking for. And we hadn't got any water with us. Uh, it's just it's just so stupid. And we got so dehydrated. We gave up at one point, drove back to the nearest village, yes. uh, which is not that far back, but we drove back to the nearest village and drank 38 gallons of Orangina and a couple of ice creams and, and, then, went back, and then went back again to carry on looking. And, uh, oh, my God, that night we got, we got, well, I suppose I got more burnt than you did. But, yeah. <laughs> but, but that night... Uh, that night I was lying in bed and I got an itch and I reached down to scratch it and I got cramp. And you know what it's like oh, you get yeah. cramp in your, in your thigh. And I couldn't stretch it out. So I tried to stretch the other way and I got cramp in the other leg. And I, So yeah. I rolled myself out of bed. And, uh, uh, and so I was standing up with cramp in both legs and I thought, well, if I just reach down, then I should, and and I got cramped down my whole side, <laughs> and then I tried to do it, and, I, and basically my whole body cramped up because of the dehydration from right. earlier in the day, and uh, and basically I just had to stand there <laughs> quietly whimpering until the cramp just passed. Um, yeah, yeah, could, that was a note a, to self. Could uh, it just double check are you connected via four uh, Gs or are you on one? I am. Just, I can't do any more than that. I know that my image quality has dropped. You just went I don't a bit know blurry, why. That's all. Yes. I'm totally uh, 4G'd up. I can make it no better. Oh, you've come back now. You've come back now. Uh, back mm. in the room. Uh, yeah, that was. It was. We broke every single rule that I ever make and every rule that I ever tell to other people. Uh, yeah. We just brazenly said, nah, be fine. And it wasn't. Yeah. Um, uh, Shepherd's Hut, Lassie. Shepherd's Hut, Matt. Yes? I don't know. Yeah. Uh, a maybe, Berger is maybe. a shepherd, yes, indeed. Yeah. And a Bergerie is a, uh, that's it, Shepherd's a Hut. Shepherd's Hut. What I was going to say about the, the, the sequence that's coming up, that already, although we'd been in the undergrowth here uh, a few days before, and we had found a dolmen, yes? But what you're about to hear is completely extemporised. I told Rupert to just go up there, find a flipping <laughs> beat about looking, yeah, yeah, yeah. genuinely looking for a dolman. I'll just follow yeah. you with the camera. Yeah, this it wasn't scripted. It was just this, this, uh, what you see yeah. is what happened. <laughs> well, except that it's compressed. I've cut a lot of it out, but, you know. For, Indeed, for yes, <laughs> especially a lot of the foul language. Uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> anyway, here we go. Here we go. Up into uh, the uh, necropolis, uh, necropole de la clap. <laughs> <laughs> this is not a path. Ow. Oh, for God's sake, normally you get a signpost and a track. I should have brought my machete. If you want to find dolmens that no other human has seen before, I think this is the very place to come. No, going back the other way. That's just solid bramble in there. That is just... <laughs> Do you know what? The man who wrote that guidebook... I bet he never came here. He was probably copying somebody else's words from 200 years ago. Gotta love a guidebook, haven't you? I mean... <laughs> imagine if this was in Britain, an actual necropolis of dolmens. It would be tended and marked on a map. This is unbelievable. I tell you what, though, I mean, from a point of view of building materials, you can see why they did it up here. This is phenomenal stone. Yay! Dolman! <laughs> A 
that's a, <laughs> a loss of decay, isn't it? It looks like the can itself would have been pretty big, though. If you look at the actual, if you know, this is the centre, and that is can material. I mean, it's hard to really tell off with all that degradation, but you know, they did like to give their dead a good view. But then I suppose if you've got to lie in the ground forever, you're going to want something that you're not going to get bored of looking at. Uh, wow, OK. Oh. Uh, yeah, that was lovely. How many dolmens are there on that hillside? Known dolmens on that hillside. There's, yeah. uh, there's eight. Um, but uh, there were probably more. But, I mean, you can see from the state of that one, um, eight yeah. that are registered on there. Yeah. yeah. And that was a struggle to find, that one. Oh, it, you know. It, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that was that, that was completely unstaged. What You know, that, <laughs> that was how the day went. Um, yeah. And we had found that one before, the day before, and we couldn't find it again. No, we couldn't. Day. Yeah. No, because it's yeah. all scrambling through box and. Uh, yeah. Um, and I don't. Yeah. I, I don't. Somebody suggested a drone. I don't. Th it might have helped uh, in advance. I don't. Uh, think I don't so. think you'd pick it out yeah. because you've got yeah. no relief. It's just grey stone on grey stone, and. Yeah. Um, and most of it is maybe. covered by the box anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. yeah. But uh, I, I wouldn't have been able to fly the drone on that day because it was so windy. That's in true. fact, I, yeah. that's right. The drone was up there, and on the day, I I, uh, I said, no, we can't do this. I wanted to fly the drone. I remember now. I wanted to get an aerial shot of, of, of the hill, you know, not for exploring, uh, not for a sort of <laughs> yeah. a drone recce, as it were. Well, you, did, you, you tried getting the drone up from where we parked the truck, but uh, it was just... Oh, I did? Um, it, okay. Yeah, but it was just, it was blown all over the place. Yeah. Um, ben Cop, yeah, hi. Uh, we're in France. We're in the south of France. Yeah. Okay, we're coming. This is pretty much the last sequence coming up, so I shall uh, roll VT once more, and you can uh, Thanks, David. round it all up. You can take us home. Take us to the wire, Mr. Soskin. <laughs> oh. oh. Well, that was easy. <laughs> Do you know what? Learning about some of these dolmens, I was reminded of Poulnebrone in County Clare in Ireland. Now, OK, I mean, loads of the French dolmens are significantly more eroded than those you'll find in Ireland, but the correlations remain. Um, Poulnebrone was found to contain the remains of 33 individuals, only one of whom was older than 30 years of age. Here, two of the tombs were found to contain the remains of 24 individuals. Now, okay, it might be a coincidence, but maybe 24 was in some way significant. The thing is that in one of those tombs, of the 24 individuals, only one was an adult male, and in the other tomb of the 24, only nine of them were older than 10 years of age. There really does seem to be something about the young going on. But bearing in mind that of all the sites that have been excavated, the vast majority were being worked on between 60 and 100 years ago. What on earth might we learn if all those remains were re-examined using modern laboratory techniques? Would DNA analysis show us that all these people were related? And that one adult male, buried with 23 women and children, would we find that he was father and grandfather to those children, or maybe husband to the women? I have to say, though, that my major concern, really, is that having found my way into this place, <laughs> I've now got to find my way out again. <laughs> oh dear. The larks we have. Just before it rounds up, um, 
it's worthwhile mentioning, uh, you know, you're mentioning Paul Nebron in that context, but that mm -hmm. was before we learned of the DNA study that had been made of uh, of Paul Nebron and, uh, of Poulnebron, course, yeah. of so many of the tombs in in Ireland in, in pursuit of uh, finding out whether they could discern uh, a hierarchy, um, an elite, mm. uh, the signs of there being an elite in uh, uh, mm. Neolithic Iron, uh, Irish uh, society, and that's where the thing about uh, the incest in Newgrange came out in in that same study. Mm. But uh, yeah, actually, it would be fascinating to see if the same kind of correlation <coughs> and relationships existed. The thing is, that, of course, Paul Brown is a standalone, pretty much, uh, and yet you know we have. The whole point of this film is that there are so many of these uh, dolmens scattered over this, uh, yeah, this landscape. Yeah. yeah, untended as they are. Um, yeah. Okay, yeah, DNA and strontium testing, that would be the trick. All right, I shall, uh, just the last bit coming up now. Clearly. These communities thrived and expanded, their descendants probably living in the towns and villages we still see today. In the same way that tourists in England are seldom aware of anything other than Stonehenge, visitors to this region only come to these big and impressive monuments. Anyone genuinely interested in prehistory would be enthralled at the wealth of archaeological remains to be found here. The sites continue, on through the mountains, down into Spain. We can only imagine how many there may once have been. But solitary and enigmatic? No. They're everywhere. No, back we back in the day when we made that we were still um, uh, under the brand of standing with stones. You may have noticed. Yes, we were, weren't we? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's um, it before that's we came. Interesting became, in itself. Uh, My yes, good it lord, how quickly the things fly by. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and also, you noticed, uh, may have noticed a, a producer credit on there from uh, Emma Rennie who at the time was one of our gold standard um, Patreon supporters. Yes. So that's, what, that's what you get, folks. <laughs> if we make any, yeah. you know, when we make films. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah. yeah. Emma, producer uh, credits uh, if for you the, see for this, the Emma, just uh, thank you again. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, well, thank you for, for joining us. I, I hope you uh, in. in Enjoy. <laughs> I see that you know some of you have watched that uh, many times before, and I hope uh, you enjoyed finding out uh, some of the stuff that uh, went on behind that. Somebody said, uh, "Oh, the Mavic is uh, is very good in the wind." Yes, it is, but it wasn't good enough on on that uh, uh, day, was it? Um, I'm I'm sorry, I got distracted there. Um, no, you're it, right. I think that yeah. you know, as, as uh, that you know, you have to bear in mind. You know, we we are so fussy about trying to make the quality of our output as good as we could make it. That if you've yeah. got any kind of wobble, it's just eh, yeah. it just looks rubbish. Well, well, the danger would not have been the wobble; it would have been lost that day, yeah, because it's already you know, whichever way you fly, downwind, <laughs> upwind. <laughs> It's it's the yeah. struggle of getting back, and I, I just briefly say that was the problem I had at Thornborough. I need I lost the the drone yeah, 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 in the yeah. thist, in the field of thistles uh, because it mm. was flying fine, but getting back from where I'd got it to against the wind, the battery ran out. So it's yeah. one of those lessons learnt. Um, but yeah. anyway, 
No, thank you for the, all your kind uh, comments on that. I really do hope that. Uh, yeah, I, I just it. I'll clarify because I think we're confusing some people who might not know. Uh, Bentcock says uh, Facebook is standing with stones, though. Yeah, uh, basically, we uh, when we came back uh, when we started doing this full time, uh, we called because Standing with Stones, the big film was what had really captured everybody's imaginations we called ourselves standing with stones you know so it was the standing with stones community on facebook and what have you uh when we started to extend beyond megaliths and doing prehistory uh on a more a broader level mm -hmm. that's when we changed our name uh professionally to the prehistory guys but standing with stones as a community still exists on uh, on Facebook. Yes, that's true, and uh, you see David. Because the community, uh, wasn't, many is... of you have seen David's name uh, rolling up and yeah. down in the chat, and uh, David is uh, uh, is a, an absolutely essential member of our team. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and you know, because the yeah. the community there isn't about us. It's a, you know, it's about uh, the community. So it's made sense to uh, you know mm. hang on with what uh, people knew. Uh, us for so you know seems to work um bloopers mm. no there aren't uh really well there probably are but uh well the bloopers themselves actually went in the film didn't they? <laughs> quite a lot of them yeah yeah <laughs> But what um, we were doing at the time, yeah. because we were mostly Facebook based at that time, this is way before Standing with Stones took off on, on YouTube and we became YouTubers mm. proper, um, that uh, we were broadcasting at the end of the day live back to um, Facebook. Now, if I can retrieve yes, the video were. from those, mm. I will put something together for those on, uh, on Patreon so that, because uh, there's some very amusing. So, yeah, some of that was funny. Some of that uh, was funny. That is true. Yeah, uh, you, yeah. You'll, 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 from some of those, you'll get a real impression of uh, of the heat and uh, how we almost mm. died um, from time to time. <laughs> uh, uh, thank you, Lynn. Thank you very much. Lynn says uh, the quality of your output is always amazing. Uh, we we do our best. We do our <laughs> best. Yeah. yeah. And thank you, thank you, Dale. Thank you, uh, Sue. Sue, and thank you. Or for your mm. kind comments. That's about it. What's next? I mean, if you enjoyed that watch party, then, I mean, unfortunately, we had to cease making our short films in 2020. Guess why? But we do have another yeah. couple of shorts. We've got the Rollwright Stones, and we've got yeah. uh, uh, the Devil's Quoits. Devil's Quoits. Yeah. Uh, and got a couple of other ones that I, I made. I don't know if they're worthy of a, a, a watch party or not, but we'll certainly put roll, roll right stones and uh, the devil's quoits uh, up there. In in the, We'll do this with those two films uh, within the few weeks. What are you giggling about now? I'm, I'm giggling at Sevilla. Uh, Sevilla says, put, put in some of the foul language, please. Would ease myself <laughs> being banned from comments on YouTube for very my language. <laughs> Yeah, uh, um, I, I I can swear like a nevy. I confess. Uh, uh, okay. fact, I can't tell you how many times my wife my, my wife berates me for my language. I never swear in public. No, no, we're both pretty. I don't bad. think I, swear. <laughs> I never swear in front of my grandchildren. That's more important. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So, which would you like to see first, Devil's Quoits or Roll Right Stones? Got a vote from Lynn for the Roll Right Stones uh, uh, already. <laughs> yeah, uh, they're both uh, fairly short. Uh, Roll Right Stones is twenty minutes, maybe, and uh, Devil's Quoits is no longer than that. So, uh, anyway, w well, that's what's your favourite out of those two? Mine. Yeah. Uh, if I had to watch, I, th I think Roll Rights. It's a tough call, though. It's a tough, tough call. Um, yeah. I, I, I wouldn't mind. That's. Um, I wouldn't like to choose between them, actually. Of the three, Domins of the Longer Dock is my favourite. I just, you know, just like the vibe of it and uh, the way it all came, yeah, yeah. To, came I, together. Uh, um, but yeah. equally proud of roll rights as as well. Roll rights, roll rights, um, roll. Let's do reason... roll rights next then. Uh, 
We'll do the roll rights, and then we'll do uh, then we'll do quoits. The reason I love quoits so much is that I was just I, 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 yeah. I've never been so blown away by blown away by any sight. I think yeah. Um, I mean, it's important to do the devil's quoits. I think we 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 need to do. I don't know how many people have watched the the devil's quoits one, um, but uh, raising the profile of that place, I think. Uh, <laughs> It's see, Sue says, Sue says the Standing Stones blooper reel. You see, now the thing is, we talked about this. Yeah. We talked about this, and there is a there is a problem. You see, in that you can watch the bloopers reel and you can laugh at me being a twat. Um, uh, the the thing is that I, you, a, a lot of you will say, Rupert, what were you laughing at? And the answer will be, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. um, uh, you know. Um, it's a funny yeah. thing. Yeah. I'm not too sure. Not too sure that uh, that a watch party of the bloopers would uh, really work. I don't think it'd be that funny. I don't know. <laughs> um, Watching Rupert laugh it, together. I yeah, know. honestly, it's. Uh, there there is that. another thing I have to say from uh, from <laughs> being uh, consummate professionals, my backside, that. Um, uh, I might write the words down on the page. That doesn't mean I'm going to remember them. And the amount of times that I I couldn't remember what I'd written, and I couldn't remember what I'd written, and sometimes the just how ridiculous the situation is, and I would just lose it and start giggling again, and Mike would just roll his eyes to the heavens. You know? yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, Kevin, thank you. Yeah, for forward this film to the tourist head for Lord Victor Plove. Do we know Victor Plove? Uh, Do you know? Victor thank you, Kevin. Plove, I Kevin, yeah. I don't know Victor Plove. Um, it, it, he's. I. Do you know what? I could tell you some stories about the people from Oak Tourism, though. Um, <laughs> but I don't think I should do that publicly. Um, Fair enough. Yeah, maybe there's a conversation yeah. we can have uh, elsewhere. Okay, <laughs> thank you very much, uh, though, for the uh, suggestion. Now what? Oh, we need to get out of this. You, you with keep, an education, you keep giggling. <laughs> Sorry, it's, it's uh, Yoda's mum is on drugs. Says Beavis and Butthead with an education. <laughs> That's probably about right. <laughs> That is probably about right. Yeah, and mm. uh, on on that note, <laughs> I think it really is time to say <laughs> bye bye now. Thank you, Kevin. I'll, I'll have a look. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Cheers. Yeah. Okay. Well, thanks for watching, folks. Yeah. Seriously, thank you, and we'll see you. Uh, we'll see you next week, shall we? Yeah. Uh, all the all the week after, um, I'll, we'll let you know. We'll get the we post up as yeah. soon as we possibly can. But in the meantime, <laughs> till the next time. <laughs> Thanks, right. folks. Bye. Bye.